This is Dominique Finney and I'm with the National Herbalist Association of Australia Sydney Seminar Series and I've got Darian Turner with me. Hi Darian. Hi Dominique. You're unique. Darian is what we call in the NHA <laughs> an elder in herbalism and she's a traditional herbalist originally from England. Can you tell me about being a traditional herbalist? What does that mean? Um, first of all it doesn't mean I'm a witch <laughs> even though I do like cats an awful lot especially black ones. <laughs> uh, it means that I use the herb, what I'm going to call the herbs of the field. Mm -hmm. um, and using the herbs of the field for me actually means using a lot of the herbs in my field. Sometimes somebody else's field, but often mine. Um, and I do that for a whole lot of reasons. A, because they're there and I know what they are and I know what to do with them. Um, secondly, I think it's really important to use what's in front of us rather than get a great big carbon footprint and I know that's jargon but it has a lot of validity mm -hmm. I think um, and that way you can get them fresh yes and that way you get to give to your patients um, something that you feel you, you, you know they're good because you've made them yeah you, you gathered them at the right time you did everything you were supposed to do to get the maximum out of the plant they can't be any fresher and the results speak for themselves. Beautiful. Now, do you use parts of plants or whole plants? How do you, how do you, what's, how do you decide what to use in a herb? Well, I don't make that decision. As a traditional herbalist, we're actually taught um, which parts to use. So, yes, it's important to know that. I mean, you don't use the leaves of yellow dock. You only dig up the roots in autumn or winter because all the herbalists from time immemorial um, upon whose shoulders we are standing taught us how to do that. So it's all in the texts, and if it's not in the texts, you've learnt it from your teachers when you were studying. Great. So what do you use yellow dock for? Um, I always use yellow dock for people who have quite a lot of discoloration in their irises, because iridology is an important tool mm -hmm. for me. Um, and it's generally thought of as a blood purifier. And for people who have that sort of muddy looking skin, so it's a great cleanser. Mm, Rumex Crispus. Rumex Crispus, the very Beautiful one. Beautiful herb. Yes. Yeah, do you use it for all age groups? I hope you wouldn't need to use it on a very tiny baby or a tiny mm. child, but then my mind flicks to if the parents hadn't been well, if the parents had been using substances that are not terribly good for mm -hmm. children and they're born into this world with some degree of toxicity, then I can see a case for perhaps using that. Mm. But then I think I might do the Morris Messigway thing and do it as a foot bath. Oh, lovely. Instead yes. of ingestive yeah. medicine, because it might be a mm. bit much for their livers, but mm. using herbs, you don't have to swallow a herb for it to be effective. Uh, so what do you do? Do you make teas? And primarily I make tinctures or extracts. Mm -hmm. Yes, primarily I think extracts. Mm. Uh, sorry, tinctures. I, mm. Yeah. Are you, um, are you um, using ethanol in your extraction process? Yeah. Great. Yeah. And what's the reason for using ethanol? If I want something to keep well, I mm. don't think I'm going to trust some of the other um, things that you could use, like glycerin. And I personally don't use um, apple cider vinegar, although it's a wonderful product, because I'm allergic to yeast, molds, and ferments. So mm. I'm not in harmony with that. Right. So I, I wouldn't use that as, as, a, as an extraction. Mm. And, and after all, you can water it down when you're taking it. You're not going to harm somebody if, by putting 20 drops of a herbal tincture in a glass of water. Mm. And, yes. and I'm a generally thought of as a low-dose practitioner. Oh, fantastic. I so, mean, obviously I will in acute mm. cases. If somebody's got acute cystitis, I'm not going to give them 10 drops of something. I'm going to give them 10 mils of something. Mm. But mm. Um, generally I would give less rather than more. Lovely. And is there any particular herb that you just love? There are many herbs that I just love, but the <laughs> most recent one, um, which has been on my just love list for about three or four years, is Madonna Lily, mm -hmm. or Lilium longiflorum, and I learned about that from Matthew Wood in one of his texts, which I can't bring to mind at this minute. It's not a senior moment, I just can't remember the name of the book. <laughs> um, 
and I've used that in all the ways that he suggests, and there seems to be so much polycystic ovary disease. And what I adore about the plant is, apart from the fact that it's gorgeous, you only need to give three drops once in the morning and polycystic ovary disease evaporates. Great. And what I don't think the... it gets much better than that, do you? No, that's brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and you will make a tincture of this? I'll make a tincture of that and sometimes I make a flower essence of it. Mm, because you really do make your own bark flower essences as I well, I make as you? many as I possibly can yeah. grow in Australia. Mm. There have been some spectacular successes and some very expensive and spectacular failures. <laughs> like don't ask larch to grow in the Hunter Valley because mm. It's just too hot. Uh, the joys of alchemy. Yes, and climate, <laughs> and climate. Yes. It, it just doesn't want to go there. Now, can you tell me um, how you practice? Like, what do you do when you see a patient as a traditional herbalist? What's the process? My process, I think the most important process is a really thorough case history. Mm -hmm. And for me, a really thorough case history starts with birth or pre-birth and that sometimes gets amazing results that you mm. couldn't possibly imagine could come into the um, interview process. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that I prize most of all is really careful listening. Mm. Yes, the art of the right question and then listening, give, giving people time to actually sift through and find the answer. And sometimes it's a surprise to them. That's right, because they can often say. I'm really not interested in the 30 second soundbite mm. in any way, shape or form. Mm, that's lovely. So you so, spend good time with your patients. I spend 50 minutes. Yeah, lovely. Which is what I can do in terms of my energy. Now, um, as a traditional herbalist, I'm sure you use rosemary. I do. That's well, we haven't um, planned this, but uh, yes, I was going to speak about rosemary because I grow a lot of rosemary yeah. because it loves it in the Hunter. Great, absolutely well, loves it. Mm. It doesn't mind about the frost that we get there. And I is there another plant I wonder that that you can make a tea from, that you can make a tincture and an extract, that you can make a volatile oil, that you can make a massage oil. Mm. All from one plant. It's beautiful, isn't it? And one big bush would make more tincture or extract than I would use in a year. Mm. So I don't need to charge a lot for my medicines because they haven't cost me a lot. That's fantastic. I, I'm very keen on making as much of my dispensary as I possibly can. Mm. Mm. So how many herbs are you extracting? I wondered if I should do a head count of that and uh, I didn't get round to it, but it would be about 40 or 50. Mm, that's brilliant. And is that the yeah. only medicines that you use, your own medicines? No, no, of course I can't grow golden seal. Mm. Hydrastis doesn't like it in the Hunter Valley. Mm. Um, so, so no, of course some have to be imported. Mm. I did have a good year once with withania. Yeah. I did very well with withania. I was very happy with that, but um, haven't grown it again. No, there, there are lots you can't grow. but. Herbs are so multifaceted that it just if you don't have one, it doesn't matter. There's another herb that will probably mimic what mm -hmm. you're trying to do. So I don't see why you'd have to have 500 herbs on the shelf. Mm. I, mm. I think I've got about 120 and some of those I would use rarely. Yeah. I'm very fond of Jamaica dogwood and I don't think I've got a chance of growing that. <laughs> what do you use Jamaica dogwood for? Well, I use it as a hypnotic. Mm -hmm. in the real sense of helping you to go to sleep. Lovely. Um, I always learnt it originally as pain relief and then I was doing some revision the other day because I think revision is very important and besides which I can't get my nose out of her books and I saw hypnotic and I thought hypnotic all right I'll try it hmm. and it sends you to sleep. Good. It sends you to sleep most reliably but I wouldn't take anything like the dose that's on the label. I think I probably would be asleep for a week if I took that. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Darian, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to talk to thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Bye.